Earlier this year, I bought an extra large or XL Higo Nokami off Amazon in the hopes I would review it eventually. And like any good American, I quickly forgot about it, threw it in a junk drawer, and bought other knives to replace it. I even made a preview of video about it, which means I must have been serious about shooting it. I don't know, maybe. So let's take a look at the overall length and weight while we ponder what it means to be a good consumer. Like the blade size and the cutting edge. Is it buying only the things we need? The handle size, the grip area. Okay, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. I've decided. Spine thickness, handle thickness. I mean, I just want to make it clear that I, I don't have a problem, okay? Well, I find it hard to believe, since these are all over Amazon, is that one dude named, um, I'm just going to write it on screen here because I'm not going to try and pronounce it, because I'm probably pronouncing the name of the Higo no Kami wrong. Well, supposedly this one dude makes all the Higo no Kamis. Internet lore states that these are a traditional Japanese friction folder, first made in 1896. And while this is a particular style of knife that has been copied, the ones in the blue and gold box, like this one, are legit made in Japan. You know, the real ones that Amazon hawks. They're easily identifiable by their brass handle and what they call a blue paper steel blade. They could probably charge more if they put the word bowler in front of it, huh? So let's take a look at the blue paper steel blade, which is a rare paper and steel alloy. Let's say that the blade steel is very carbon steel-like, as in it rusts easily and it patinas, as you can see here, and it has what is best can be described a Scandinavian grind. It's not exactly like it, but it sharpens like a Scandinavian grind because there is no micro bevel at the bottom, at least until you sharpen it. Expect the blade to take a razor edge easy, but it needs to be sharpened often. Even during its limited use, there's some edge damage. Now apparently there's some higher end versions of this knife, but this is the standard XL version with the three and a half ish inch blade. There are smaller variants too, so you can get one of those. I got most of this information from some random blade form threads, people discussing it, Wikipedia, Amazon product reviews, a few sketchy websites, a Vimeo video, and an email forward. So it's the typical well-researched video you've come to expect from me. Okay, maybe not an email forward. Are those still a thing? The handle is brass, meaning it'll pick up finger filth quick and begin to change color even if you throw it in your junk drawer after using it for only 10 minutes. A bluish color means fecal matter. On my handle you can see some outlines of my fingerprints. Hmm, wonder what I used it for back then. The handle is made from one piece of brass probably folded by a machine with a lanyard hole in the back. The handle is pretty bare, there's some slight designs on it. The edges aren't sharp, but they do have a distinct edge. If you want to use this often and squeeze it hard, maybe take some fine grit sandpaper just to take the edge off or a shot. Or you can just be a man for once or a lady. Since I have the XL version, it's long enough for my hand, so there's no finger crowding or whatever. The deployment of the knife can best be described as two-handed unless you're a show-off like me. You could possibly open it one-handed but you have to do it like this. The blade does rub on the inside of the handle, so it might give some people a new appreciation for a Benchmade. It's a friction folder, meaning there is no lock. You can depress your thumb on the tab up top and that helps keep it open, but basically the downward force of cutting is the only thing keeping it from folding. The blade pivots on a rivet and is not adjustable. Wah wah. Like I said earlier, these knives are allegedly handmade by one dude on old machines. I have read some reports on well-centered, blemish-free knives, but good luck there. Expect the blade to rub when opening and closing, and when folded, expect the blade to be stopped by the inside of the handle. Just close it carefully. I think the allure of this knife is maybe its quick ability to pick up wear from the individual user and to look like something that's old. Like, for example, you could put it on your desk in a jar as a letter opener, and when someone eventually asks you about it, you could say, your great-great-grandfather picked it up in World War I in Japan and they would probably believe you. Except for that one person who says, oh, uh, I didn't know the US was stationed in Japan in World War I. And at that point, you probably need to take a call or something, or just start lying more and turn it into a much bigger lie. And while I wrap it up, let's do a few shots of my hand holding other knives that you might be familiar with, so you can get a good idea of its size. 
And you can also look at my hand more. I actually put lotion on it halfway through the review. Should you buy this? Eh, it might make a great around the office letter opener or box opener. Let's put it this way. If you hate the refinements of modern knives and have never once complained about an uneven grind or blade centering issue on a knife, maybe. That wasn't you that complained about the slightly off-center $15 Gonzo, was it? Yeah, not you, huh? It kind of looks cool, but the handle isn't all that comfortable. It's not fidget friendly. But it is handmade and it's custom, so, you know, I guess that's a lot for $20. If you like this review, subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Check the description for links to the video of the guy making the knives and a link to a repost of the Higo no Kami story, which I have no way of verifying and I really don't care to. Thanks for watching.